from an enterprise perspective, you know, of course, every enterprise is understanding what their customers are saying and listening. But how can we take the data that is coming all the time and to your point, summarize and say, what's the sentiment right now? Like, what are we hearing today? Let's say there's a market activity that goes on that all of a sudden there's a tremendous amount of movement. Well, what do we need to know right now? What's on our customers' minds in real time so that we can prepare and better service them? Nice to have you here. And I'm excited to talk to you about what's going on. So why don't you just tell people very briefly what you do at Prudential Financial? Yeah. Um, first of all, thanks for having me. Very exciting topic. Really excited to talk about this today. Um, so what I do at Prudential Financial is I lead a team of people and robots that do transactional work um, throughout all of our U.S. businesses uh, for almost every type of customer journey you can imagine, from the intake of, of new business all the way through claims. And so our purpose really is to put our people in the best position to win by blending machines and people to get the best outcomes. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So when you first looked at generative AI, what got you excited and when was it? Oh, um, well, the first time I thought about the moment, if you will, was around when I saw uh, an example of ChatGPT on TikTok. So it had launched. I had seen all of these videos on it. Uh, people, you know, it's a lot of Gen Zers talking about how could they use it to create their papers or they could create code or whatever they wanted to do, create a small video game to play all these really kind of cool applications that they would be able to just immediately create to the point you were making around creation and do that in such a way that these videos were coming out every few hours from these same people that really latched onto it. And it really just started the sort of the spark of what's possible here. And of course, you know, thinking about it from an enterprise lens, what could we take here and translate into the enterprise? Um, there are uh, applicable things that uh, could come out of uh, this kind of work. Obviously, we're not going to be generating a paper on on sort of uh, 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 literature. But with that said, there are things that uh, we could actually create to service our customers or make our employees' lives better. Right. Okay. So what is the, what's the general sentiment among your colleagues, either at Prudential or like in the industry? Because I know you know a lot of people in the industry. Do they share your enthusiasm for this? I think everybody's excited about it. Everybody's like, wow, this is really cool. But how could we use it? How could we think about utilizing it in a multinational sort of setting um, in, in the particular industry I'm in within a highly regulated financial services industry or even outside of that? How do we make it practically real? Because coming back to your point around the iPhone, the iPhone and, the, and even the iPad had its little bit sort of a mini moment. Right when those launched into the enterprise, it was like, well, how do we do this? How do we make it? So everybody got an iPhone for the most part, but did it really change the way we worked? And then people had their iPads. Did it really change the way? Now, not many people have those, but this feels different. This feels much more applicable to the everyday in terms of how it is we could use it. But we just have to figure out how do we get started? And then what's sort of the, the practical way forward to build incremental wins and also have a very bold vision about what could we really make a difference? How can we make a huge differentiator out of this for our particular businesses? Well, when you think about this practical idea, and I showed that little diagram, I said, you know, let's just like be simple. Let's be simple about it. Yeah. You know, companies are organized functionally. Mm -hmm. And each one of those areas has problems or they may have tools that do a certain amount of things and they don't do others. Like the RPA processes, a lot of times are trying to automate a lot of those things. When you think about the functional areas and you tie it back to that practical application that you're talking about, like what stood out to you? What were you thinking about when I was talking through those ideas? So I was thinking about how do we blend the machine and the person to be hyper productive and to get to outcomes that we otherwise wouldn't. Sometimes it's just hard to get started on the new idea, the new project or the deliverable. And so if generative AI can help us, we give it the parameters and it helps us draft a contract. It helps us create a script for the contact center. It helps us, for me, it would be really great if it could help me uh, organize my thoughts in a presentation and then you know, be able to create a presentation that I can then augment with, how does that make it real to my audience? Um, that's sort of where I think could be a real practical application from day one. Help me get that much more effective, faster and better at what I do so I can do more of it and and do it better potentially. 
Absolutely. So when you think about that internally as well, I'm sure you have people in your organization that are saying, hey, what do you think about ChatGTP? What do you think about generative AI? What is their level of awareness of what is actually going on? Do they just know about what's happened with ChatGTP and maybe Bing? Or are, have they actually dug in and they've, they've seen that there's these enterprise solutions as well, or these at least new enterprise features that can leverage the technology? I think we're all inundated with so much news. And so there's a lot of, you know, whether it's through social media, through, you know, through TV, where, wherever you consume information, you get that perspective. And right now you're hearing all about, well, certain states are banning it or what are the, you know, whatever happens to be out there. And, and, and when you think about sort of the, the idea of people hear it better from their friends, their family, et cetera. And so a lot of my colleagues have brought it up in the sense of, you know, my cousin, my kid, whoever, they showed me this really cool application of chat GPT. What do you know about it? What do you think about it? And, you know, I, I'm normally talking about it from that context in terms of a personal consumer level, because that's what connects with people. But when it's colleagues in the office, I have talked about it in terms of, well, if we got to the point where we were able to use this, because to the point you made, there are risks and we have to look out for those. Um, how do we make it real? And how do we get people excited about it? Because that's how it's going to take off. All, all, there's so many new tools that come in all the time uh, that we, we're all asked to look at. And many of them flop because we, we can't actually make them exciting and people grab on. I think this one's different. I do. It, is, it does seem different. It does. I, I guess from, from your perspective um, and what you're seeing throughout the industry, where do you see folks sort of latching on in terms of the differentiator? Uh, well, first of all, there's a rush to features, right? Yeah. So everyone feels like they need to have something in their arsenal where they're saving using generative AI or they're integrated yeah. with open AI. And so some of those are actually kind of mundane, um, but there are some that I think are really tremendous. So first of all, like I actually wrote something in Cthulhu not long ago, there's basically five product categories that have already changed. Like one is just as the writing assistants are actually very good. Those were some of the first ones to come out that we're talking about not six months ago, we're talking about a year and a half ago. So they've had time to, uh, to move along. I think search is really interesting. And I'm particularly interested in summarization, which doesn't get this much, that much conversation out there. People are excited about the generation aspect. I can create a new answer to a chatbot inquiry, you know, that type of thing. But one of the things that I think is underutilized is this idea of we actually have a lot of conversational data out there, unstructured data, uh, natural language data is probably the best way to say it. Uh, and actually getting information out of it is, is hard. And so there's some ways you can do that through search, uh, but another way you can do it is through summarization. And the LLMs are actually unique in that. We've had some good tools for search. I think with the LLMs, they're better. Uh, we, we, we're up leveling, but for summarization, we just didn't have that. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think about from an enterprise perspective, you know, of course, every enterprise is understanding what their customers are saying and listening, but how can we take the data that is coming all the time and to your point, summarize and say, what's the sentiment right now? Like, what are we hearing today? Let's say there's a market activity that goes on that all of a sudden there's a tremendous amount of movement. Well, what do we need to know right now? What's on our customers' minds in real time so that we can prepare and better service them? Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to have to move on to our first presentation and demo. And that's one of the fun things that we have here today. But let me just ask you a question as we, as we part. And uh, and I thank you for joining us here today. No, my pleasure. What have you not seen demonstrated that you think is really interesting that you would really like to see? Is there something oh. on your mind that, you know, beyond all the things that people have talked about or shown that you actually just haven't seen someone do this yet? That's an awesome question. Um, something that I would want to see that I have not yet seen demonstrated would be, I would say... It, so I come from an insurance background, right? And so, and I think about things in terms of underwriting claims, all that kind of good stuff. And so being able to sort of, in real time, gather all of the rest necessary data. Let's say someone is in a car accident and, mm -hmm. or, and they have, it's a horrible time, right? No matter if it's minor or major, it's a it's huge inconvenience. How can someone take all of the different tools and communicate 
in a, in a generative AI driven way between all of the pictures that can be sent back and forth, the data that is sent back and forth, all of the evidence that needs to be sent back and forth, et cetera, in real time. So you may not get your answer in terms of your particular claim at that moment, but can you have the satisfaction to know that I'm being taken care of? It's it's okay, right? I can deal with this, but from a, from a pure insurance lens, I don't have to worry about all this stuff because all of the technology around me is helping me be able to uh, make that sort of a reality in terms of the comfort level I have with the company that I'm interacting with. So uh, that's sort of the lens that I think about it in terms of an enterprise. How can I take all of this kind of really good, rich sort of new technology and make it real so that it has impact around the world around us?